What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video, absorbing the power of the sun, Ra himself. Because we're talking about an important topic today, there is a monster episode of our podcast, myself and Eric Helms, Iron Culture, called Body Recomposition. Can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time? And I know you think you know the answer, but trust me, you're gonna learn something. So very quick, if you want the full video, the interview with someone, Christopher Barricat, who's been researching this, link is in the description. I highly recommend you check out the podcast. It's full of power. But I'm gonna summarize it for you, don't you worry. I know what you're probably thinking, it seems like that magical unicorn. Everybody wants it, right? If you were to look into your heart and soul, your true heart and soul, and you were to examine what do you really want, you kind of want both at once, right? Sure, you might try and be sensible because you read some articles, you're a part of the evidence-based community, you're like, oh, well, I want to lose a little bit of fat and maybe I want to build muscle afterwards. But secretly, if you could get your choice, you'd be yak to the gills. You'd have a lot of muscle, you'd build muscle simultaneously, as well as losing fat. And not a minor amount, I'm talking a significant amount. So body recomposition change. And that is, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced lifter, that's the holy grail, right? Let's be honest. So, I know you're probably thinking you know the answer. Body recomposition, not really relevant to you, right? Because you're not a beginner, uh, you're not obese, so you're not very overweight, and you have been training for a long period of time, so you're not untrained. Well, not so fast, Skippy. Because what they did, uh, Christopher Barricat and a few others, they did a review. There's an article in the recent Strength Journal. I'll link that also in the description if you actually want to check that out more than just the abstract, but read the whole damn thing. But basically, they routinely show across studies that well trained individuals, when they really apply themselves, the body recomposition effect is real. You can experience it both at once. Sure, we can all make the argument right now that if you want to maximize muscle growth, does it make sense to be eating at maintenance or below maintenance? No, but can you, you watching this video, is it possible for you to build muscle at the same time as losing uh, some weight, losing some fat? Absolutely. And the first thing I want you to wrap your head around is that the two systems are separate, right? They're not as intertwined as you think. It's not like there's a, a, a switch or a flip that's going on here. So you think to yourself, okay, I wanna build muscle. So whoop, gotta be in that caloric surplus or wait, I wanna lose fat. I gotta be in that caloric deficit. So routinely they see in studies, and again, these aren't just newbies. These aren't just untrained individuals. In fact, one study, uh, I think the barrier to entry, you had to have at least squatted 1.5 times your body weight. And that might not sound like much, but keep in mind these are recreational war lifters, not you know elite power lifters. So they've been training probably for a year, two, three years, right? They went time in the gym. And what tends to occur when they do a lot of these studies, uh, take a look at caloric intake, as long as they're not hypocaloric. And so this is one of the caveats I would put forth, is that if you're trying to get shreddy shred, don't expect because you won't have an optimal hormonal profile to be also building a rapid amount of muscle. So we're talking basically slightly below maintenance, your calories at maintenance, or in some individuals, it is possible to actually be in a caloric surplus and lose fat while building muscle. Okay. But anyways, routinely I'll throw up uh, some of these studies and again, you could check out the article, you could check out the review, that they're actually building muscle at the same time as losing fat. And here's the interesting part, they're well-trained individuals. But one of the interesting caveats is that a lot of the subjects, you think you're training hard, you think you're really applying yourself at the gym, routinely this is the case because in most studies, I think a lot of people don't actually realize this, they actually have to train to failure. And that way, they're able to analyze effectively, okay, how many reps did this person do? Well, they train to failure, that's a variable therefore we can control it's another thing we don't have to worry about so they're training very hard and routinely even in well-trained subjects they'll say when they participate in these studies this is the hardest they've ever trained so I think this is one of the missing nuggets right here we often think well, we've got to be feeling the body right it's like that's true but you need to perturb the body to change and if you have as long as you have a minimal threshold of calories, so you're not going hypocaloric, you're not under eating significantly, you actually can synthesize muscle at the same time as mobilizing a little bit of fat. And again, I can understand some people think to themselves, wait a second here, like, well, wouldn't I want to focus more directly on one? Sure, but there are many circumstances where this could be relevant for you, a body recall, because I think we're attached to seeing the scale weight change because that's a tangible, concrete way of us analyzing them, in fact, making progress. And for a body recall, because hey, some people would think to themselves, well, guess what? I just got to pump that I look in the mirror. I look a lot better. Oh, a body recomp occurred. It doesn't work like that. It's hard to evaluate on your own objectively, right? Even with the body fat measurement tools, you need to have a prolonged period of time in order to analyze it effectively. But even still, we become attracted to that 
dramatic uh, difference. So that's why a lot of people do the dirty bulk. I gained 20 pounds. It's like, and you gained one pound of muscle, right? So they want to see that rapid fluctuation on the scale. And so body recomps actually require a little bit more patience. And I think one of the big benefits, if you're a weight class restricted athlete and you're looking to optimize your composition, it's possible to stay within that weight class and have that occur without dramatic shifts. So without going super high or super low. And here's another time where it could be very relevant. Let's say uh, for yourself right now, maybe the quarantine or uh, less than optimal scenario going on, such as myself where I didn't have access to regular gym equipment, I still was able to have access to a barbell, but I had to change my training. And what occurred was actually kind of crazy was staying around the same weight, but I actually was training harder because I had less overall stress and I'd argue my body composition improved. And so I think when you're restricted with the variables that you have at your disposal, and again, you don't want to be in that huge caloric surplus, it makes sense sometimes to try and maintain, and by maintain, actually improve your body composition. I think when we see just something stagnate, we feel that we're stagnating, we feel that we're homeostatic with everything that we're trying to do, we're not making progress, and that's not so. So I think for some people, learning to embrace really trying to focus on progress and one of the easiest takeaways i'd say for everyone uh, out there is make sure if you don't know what calories you're eating try and find out make sure you're consuming adequate amounts of protein you need to at least be around maintenance you could be a little bit below maintenance experiment with that where you might be losing a little bit of fat as well as building some muscle and really apply yourself make sure you're uh doing a regimented program that the proximity of failure is high and the last thing i'll say very quickly i've seen this i've uh, uh trained individuals i've seen this happen and i see a lot of people for this the gym that i go to there's been some people that have come back after time away from the gym and they've experienced a little bit of a body recon because they focus way too much on specificity so they're focusing on the big three they're getting that skill acquisition of doing a lot more squat bench and deadlift so they're squatting to do their triples they're doing top single but then when they got removed from the gym and they're doing a lot more repetitions and their proximity to failure is more and they've increased their volume, their body composition actually looks better. So it definitely is possible. A re-examination of everything that you're doing and the assumptions that you have might be very valid. I'll link in the description the podcast for you to check out. I do think it's worth everyone's time to challenge some of these assumptions where we sometimes just like those dirty fast heuristics like yeah okay body recomp not really a thing for me not relevant it's like there's a time and place where I actually can become very relevant to you so anyways that's all the time we have I gotta get out of here we we see the sunset here I'm absorbing the power that's why the sun is setting I'm draining its power the sun is setting this is science welcome if you like the video make sure to like the damn video and look I see what you're seeing you're looking at this hoodie and you're thinking to yourself you know what body recomp I don't know I don't give a fuck this is a pretty fly hoodie what's going on next week october 2nd friday new big rascal drop this is going to be one of the items make sure to check it out i gotta get out of here if you like the video like the damn video and i'll see all you guys my rascals in that next one peace eat your vegetables eat your vegetables eat your fucking vegetables